Okay, so I was asked this question, how do you do this without being the doer? How do I become presence and what is the soul? Three part question. Okay, how do you do without becoming the doer? Well, initially everyone is, in, I would say most people in this world start off with being a doer. What does that mean? I mean, you're a thinker. So as soon as you identify with thoughts, uh, you're in separation, you're in duality. So there's the idea that doing something is required for whatever belief it is. Like I need to do something to eat. I need to make, I mean, I need to order something online. And I need to do that. The me, the separated ego needs to do that for that to happen. Or um, um, I'm in pain, so I need to do a calling to the doctor. That's a doing. So the, to the thinker, to the identified ego, uh, which thinks in terms of doing actions to um, to get out of whatever, you know, basically to seek pleasure or avoid pain. So it, it's coming from the thinker, which automatically thinks that it is the doer, the orchestrator of life. Uh, that's the idea that, the, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of my life. I'm doing it all. It's all me. And without me, I can't do anything. So that that's the idea of the doer. Um, so how 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 do you do things without being well? Uh, at a certain point in the spiritual practice, whether it's through Course in Miracles, whether it's through Ramana's Witnesser, or whether it's through any other spiritual high any other high spiritual discipline, I like David Hawkins. Um, you're dissolving the ego, and at a certain point, a spiritual awakening occurs, where um, the the doer or the thinker it's witnessed to be an irrelevance or there's a separation from that and then it's realized that um out of out of nothing things spontaneously unfold uh the the thinker and the thinker and the, the the illusory idea of a doer vanishes and things are orchestrated without the thinker which thinks it is the doer and the orchestrator of life that illusion is 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 then seen to be an illusion, and then uh, the out of presence, out of being, out of uh, holiness, um, things may be seen or not seen, um, but to others it may seem like the body's talking or thinking, but it's all coming out of silence, and there's nothing really happening. So 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 how do you check? How do you go from the doer to the um, to the beer? Or, or to that which is beyond uh, doing and thinking. Well, you, you, you're usually the spiritual inspiration may be to pick up the Course in Miracles or to or pick up Ramana or pick up Hawkins or whatever text it is. And it seems like for the beginning you're doing it. But it, when there is um, spiritual inspiration behind it, which is orchestrating the burning off of the identification with thoughts and body and form, uh, at a certain point, um, there's a ripeness for the spiritual awakening, for the disidentification and the awakening to a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of of being uh, without, uh, and the revelation of being without needing to be a doer or seeing that the doer was actually an illusion. It was actually a blocking life as opposed to actually contributing to life by identifying such an illusory idea that the ego is the center of the universe and has all power to do anything. So eventually that that's um, that is witnessed. Um, so you know, you just keep doing whatever you're inspired to do until the awakening happens, which is by grace, of course, because the ego is not you know, the vested interest of the ego is to stay in being a doer. It doesn't really want to dissolve or disappear. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so how do yeah, I think that also answers how do I become presence? Same question, really. Um, you know, for example, the Course in Miracles, all my thoughts are meaningless. Um, so let's say um, if you, if every single thought is meaningless, then at a certain point, if you just keep repeating that with every meaningful thought, then eventually there'll be no thoughts left that you'd identify with because you don't identify with anything that's meaningless. You can't, by definition, it vanishes. You don't remember or see anything which is 100% meaningless. Either that it doesn't exist for you. You'll see that in your own experience as you do the work. So um, if you made every single thought absolutely meaningless so it didn't register, then you'd, you'd switch from the, the doer thinker to the beer. 
So, you know, so that even that one course lesson could take you all the way. Or if you keep witnessing thoughts and going to the disidentified witnesser of thoughts and go to the witnesser where thoughts cease to exist, that would eventually dissolve the idea of a thinker-doer and collapse that idea as you awaken to a higher level of, of, of being uh, without the illusion that there was such a thing as a doer or that was really real. Uh, and in fact, it creates separation and 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 suffering, really. So, um, okay, and a separate question, what is the soul? in spiritual literature well this you know this is i mean there could be many ways to um label the soul but for me the soul is that uh, it's like the spiritual body which is you know we say like this you have your soul i mean you, i mean you could say the soul is docked into a physical body sometimes and sometimes it's not it just holds all the programming all the karmic beliefs all the uh, lessons uh, that need to be transcended until uh, the soul is dualistic so it's still in separation so uh, the soul keeps coming back and forth with its baggage into bodies or out of bodies or to different astral realms or heavenly realms or hellish realms uh, depending on the level of beliefs that's weighing it down or not weighing it down but as long as it's holding if, if you like beliefs or karma or spiritual lessons it's still um one still has that sort of spiritual packaging uh until at, at a certain point the all the beliefs uh, of karmic baggage from the soul is released and disappears and then one is beyond the idea of even having a soul that's everything is dissolved into into oneness into into the infinite so the in, in you know a soul is a dualistic it's still in dualism uh, being so it still has some identification of separation in it but beyond the, when that's 100 percent released then one is returned to the infinite state infinite is beyond a, a individuated soul you can't have like you wouldn't have like you know oh you've got your soul and i've got my soul and everyone's got a different soul no when once you go into the infinite that's beyond souls individuated souls so it doesn't exist souls do not exist at the level of infinity uh so yeah, but it is used. It is important to use it until you're at the level of infinity, uh, because you know it's like, oh, what is that thing that you know when people have out of body experiences or go astral traveling, or feel uh, or I uh, disidentify from the body and go to a hellish realm or a, or um, or visit a hellish realm or heavenly realm. Well, that's the soul. It's still in duality, so it still has programming that is you know binding it or. If you like, it's like a resonance. The soul resonates at a heavenly realm, or it resonates with so much baggage, it takes it down to some dark, dark dimension. Okay, so that's how I'd say my my take on it for most of spiritual literature, even though people can have a different view.